All right. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the uh, StatHead um, webinar, um, the StatHead Hockey Playoff webinar. My name is Jonah. I am the uh, uh, Product Marketing Manager here at StatHead. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. It's very exciting to have all of you here. We've been doing webinars for all of the sports because it's been a really busy uh, sports, sports time in the year. So I'm very excited to uh, uh, get to hockey tonight and dig into all of the cool things you can do on Hockey Stat Head. So um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, all right, if that's not working, uh, holler at me. Um, but otherwise, I, uh, it seems like it's OK. So uh, this is the hockey reference uh, page. This is kind of where the main Hockey stats go, it's where probably a lot of people go to look up uh, player stats, you know, team stats, standings, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and hockey reference is great, but we realize we have this massive database that we can use to answer more complex questions than just going to Wayne Gretzky's page and seeing how many goals he scored in a given season. We can use it to answer, answer questions maybe a level or two up from that. So that's why we created StatHead. It's a series of tools that search through the hockey reference database to find answers to more complex questions. So instead of just um, how many goals did Wayne Gretzky score, it's um, how many 30 goal seasons did he have? Was it the most all time? Um, it's Wayne Gretzky, so the answer is probably yes. Um, who had the most 100 point seasons? Who had the most road hat tricks? Um, what team won the most games in a season by four goals or more? Um, you know, uh, I can just I can just spout off questions all day, but instead, what I'm going to do is uh, go onto StatHead and uh, show you how to answer these. So uh, the way you get there is on this gray bar on top. If you go over to StatHead and click that, um, and uh, it'll load up in uh, just a moment. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I hope you can bear with us. Uh, there are some intermittent outages on the site today, so it might be running a little slow or acting a little quirky. At times, we're really sorry about that. It's, uh, uh, I believe it has to do with a, a, a new update or something. So it's a very temporary issue, but as you can see, we've got it loaded up now. So here is the main page for StatHead. As I mentioned, we have baseball, basketball, football, and hockey. So we're gonna go over to the hockey site. And these are the hockey StatHead tools. Um, and the first thing you do when you get to StatHead is decide what kind of question do you want to answer? And so ahead of this webinar, I solicited uh, a bunch of questions from, from the people who RSVP'd from you all uh, of questions you might want to know um, about using StatHead or just things you'd like me to look up. Um, we're mainly going to be doing stuff kind of related to the playoffs. Uh, so we'll be looking at some tools that are kind of more relevant to that uh, than some of the other tools. Um, but if there's anything uh, that you want to see, that I don't get to, feel free to chime in in the chat or in the Q&A, and I'll try to show it. But the first question I got um, is a good segue into the first tool I'm going to show you, the player game finder. So the question uh, I had uh, from, from one, of, one of the people who RSVP'd from one of y'all was, uh, how do I find player stats against a particular team in the playoffs, both during current years and past years? So player stats against a particular team um, if you're just looking for one player, you could obviously find that on their splits page for their career in a single season, but you won't see playoff stats there. And you, uh, uh, against a certain team, you won't be able to get a range of years if you want to narrow it down. You won't be able to how that, see how that compares to other, other players. What we're going to want to do instead to find that kind of, uh, the answer to that kind of question is going to the player game finder. Um, the player game finder searches through our box score logs. Um, we have every box score for every NHL game, regular season and playoffs all time, all the way back to 1917, 1917, uh, 19, the first year of the NHL. Um, and this game finder lets you quickly look through it to find answers to questions. So in this case, the question we're looking for is player stats against a particular team in the playoffs during, uh, during a given year. So um, let me see. So maybe uh, uh, player stats against the Avalanche the last couple of years. That might be a good good place to start. So um, 
you'll see every stat head tool has kind of these same three main sections, uh, pretty much all of them. There are some exceptions here or there, but they're very rare. So uh, I'm gonna start by showing you this section on the, the left-hand column side of the screen uh, that is headlined search criteria. This is where you input the details of the question that you're trying to answer. Um, so in this case, the details are, you know, team, what, what team, and uh, it just says player stats. So I'll just do points. I'll just pick points as the stat I'm looking for. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is find a team. And the way you do that is that under this section, there are all sorts of different filters that help you narrow or expand the search you're trying to do. So right now, we're looking right now, the way this is set up, uh, all we would be searching for is goals all time, all the way back to 1917, 18, just against anything. We wanna get a little more specific than that. So the first thing we're gonna do is change this from the regular season to the playoffs. The regular season is over. We don't care about that anymore. Um, next, we're gonna scroll down to these filters. And there are three types of filters in, in the game finder, uh, what we call statistical filters, player filters and game filters. So these statistical ones are stats, goals, assists, points, plus minus. When you click on one of them, you'll get a little box here that lets you put in a number. So this would be at least three points or uh, three greater than or equal to three for, for points. Um, we're not gonna mess with that right now. We're gonna go down to player filters and go to players team. And you can see there are other options for age, position, um, which all, put a pin in because we're going to have to come back to position uh, in a minute, but team, you know, um, is what we're looking for right now. And then we're going to, um, but we're actually not looking for team. I was tricking you to see if you were paying attention because that's the team that the player is on. We're looking for uh, the player stats against the team, the opponent stats. So to get that, we would go down to game finder and click on opponent. So now we can see we want, we've got all franchises and then the opponent we want is the Colorado Avalanche. So this is any team anyone's playing for when they face the Avalanche. So that's a very important distinction to make. And you'll, you'll occasionally see some kind of uh, similarities there that you just want to be cognizant of. So now we've got opponent, Avalanche, game type playoffs. So these are playoff games against the Avalanche. We're going to narrow down the range of years, um, maybe just to the last few, because how people fared against the early 2000s, late 90s avalanche. Uh, not very interesting to us right now for this, this sort of research uh, in the playoffs. And then um, we'll stick with goals for now. Um, we, we can all, I'll, I'll switch to points at some point. You know, we can do plus minus. Actually, no, I'll stick with goals. So um, we're, we're gonna see who scored the most goals in the playoffs against the avalanche since 2018. Um, so now that's our search criteria. Again, I could have done anything else. I could have done, you know, uh, 21 or under, you know, I could have done on the player's birthday. I could have done in, in losses or wins, but right now we're just looking for playoff games against the avalanche. So now I'm going to go up to this top section above the search criteria. These are the search types. Uh, and this is where we determine the actual framework of the question we're asking. So right now our search type is find single games matching criteria. So if I just don't do anything, I just run the default search with the filters that we've set up. What I will eventually get is a list of who has had the most goals in a single game against the Avalanche in that time range, 2018 to today. Uh, so it'll just be like the search we saw initially. Here it is. These are just one game, one playoff game, most goals. So we can see there were a few hat tricks in there a couple two goal games, a couple one goal games. So these are people who, these are, but again, these are just single games. Uh, but that wasn't the question. The question was how have they performed against the Avalanche, like in the playoffs, who's done the best recently, who, who's scored the most goals. So to do that, we're gonna change the search type from find single games matching criteria to find players with cumulative games in a season matching criteria. Um, and then uh, you'll see, uh, uh, this option here, group results by year to year versus over the course of the career. We're going to change that to over the course of the career. Don't worry about that uh, because um, 
between you and me, uh, we are rolling out some some big improvements to the uh, uh, game finder. that are going to be online in a couple of weeks. One of them is going to be to change the thing where you have to go and select that. There's just going to be two different options in the search types that let you do that. So you won't have to worry about that. But anyway, I ran the search and here we go. We now have our list of who has scored the most goals against the abs in the playoffs in this period of time we're looking for. So um, this is our, this is our leaderboard. Um, this is, this is the information we were looking for, but what if we say, Hey, you know, actually I'm more interested in points. I can just click the points button and this, this table as it exists, which is complete. It's not always going to be complete. It'll only show 300 lines. Um, but in this case, there were only 166 players who have played against the abs. So I can click points. It'll resort the table by points. I can click shifts and it'll resort it by shifts, uh, most shifts against the avalanche in the playoffs, so on and so forth down the line. Um, so that's kind of how these works. The, these tables work the same way as a regular hockey reference table, uh, as far as that goes. Um, so that is how you set up a basic search in the player game finder. But I think there's one question that I would have I, I mean, there may be several questions, but one thing that I have, just kind of looking at these lists of stats, we got goals, assist points, uh, shots, you know, shooting percentage. You know, these are all interesting stats, uh, but there are no goalie stats. Uh, how do you get goalie stats in here? Um, that's where we're going to go back to the player filters and select position. And right now, as default, it's set to all skaters. And it's going to show you skater stats. Here are the stats we were looking at just a moment ago. When I change it to goalie, the stats change with it. So now I have all the goalie stats, uh, saves, wins and losses, shutouts, et cetera. So if you want to see goalie stats, all you do is go to position, change it from uh, skater to goalie, and there you go. And, and then there are also filters if you want to see different positions within skaters, like defensemen or uh, forward or even within the forwards, the different different kinds. So all of those options are there. Um, so that's a that's a very important thing um, about the game finder. But there's one other thing I want to show you that's relevant to the playoffs. That's really cool. That's kind of tucked away. So you'll notice when I clicked playoffs, we we got this new drop down that said playoff round. There's also this drop down called span of games. When I click on that, you'll see that there's this option for series game number. Um, by default, it's looking for every game in the series from one to seven, but you can, you can narrow it down. So if you're looking for just game seven stats, uh, you can just change that minimum from one to seven. And now any search I run is going to get me game seven stats. So what if I want to see who had the most career saves in a game seven? Uh, the same in a playoff game seven, this is already pretty much set up. I've got goalie. I want to remove the opponent because I'm no longer as interested in how they did against this, this specific team for the question I'm answering now. But if I was interested in that, I could just leave that on. It's, it's totally up to you. Um, I've got game seven. I've got goalie. And then I'm going to go ahead and expand the, re the range. We'll do this all the time. And then I'll click get results. And oh, I did save percentage. That was uh, that was my B. Sorry, everybody. Let's run this again with saves. And there we go. Uh, Patrick Patrick Waugh, Martin Brodeur, top two in game seven saves. Um, and so that's how you do a search for a game seven or game one, or if for some reason you want to see game three stats, whatever whatever the reason is, you just change that that span. But instead of a single game number, what you might be interested in is, is seeing ser series sets, numbers for a series. That's where this playoff round dropdown uh, comes into play. And you'll see that we have uh, categories here for every single playoff round, including how they've changed and kind of kind of been reshuffled over the years and, and renamed, and reorganized based on how the, the Stanley Cup playoff has expanded and changed. So, um, all of these will have kind of like different meanings depending on the years that they were relevant. So you can narrow it down that way. Um, but you can also do this, which is any single playoff series. And it'll search every single series individually, regardless of what round it was, whether it was the first round or the Stanley Cup final or the semifinals or the conference finals or whatever. Um, 
And so when you click on that, and then using that in conjunction with this cumulative games in a season search, uh, and then changing it to year to year. Now, when I run the search, what it's going to give me is the most saves in any playoff series. Curtis Joseph in the, um, uh, I, that looks like uh, the second round. Um, uh, Curtis Johnson, 277 saves. Jonas Hiller, 274. And you can see, notice all of these seven games because it's searching individual series, but it's not searching the same series. It's searching any of them. I think this is one of the coolest features in hockey reference. I use it all the time for my research. I can't recommend it highly enough. And again, you can come on here and just see, oh yeah, uh, any single playoff series. So that's the game finder. I know I, I dove in pretty deep to that one. Hopefully it wasn't too basic for you guys. Um, and one other thing to look forward to, like I said, we're rolling out a new update to this. In addition to improving the way this, this cumulative game search works, we're adding three new search types, which will let you search for teams and seasons uh, with the most kind of player games matching your search. So if you wanted to see, so right now, like if you wanted to do hat trick searches, you could search for just a list of hat tricks with the this single games. You could search for who had the most hat tricks in a season with this players with most games in a season, or you could do most hat tricks in their career or in a range of years with this one, combined seasons or careers matching criteria. With these new filters that are coming down the line in just a couple of weeks, you'll be able to search for the team that had the most hat tricks in a season, the season where the most players had a hat trick, or even the, the games where the most individual players had hat tricks. There were like two or three players who did it in a game. Um, all of that would come up in these searches with these new search types. So that's something to look forward to you. Just a couple of weeks away from watching that, we're very excited here. And if you're an all sports subscriber, you're gonna be seeing similar things rolling out for baseball, basketball, and football in their game finders very soon. We're always working to improve Sadhead and add whatever new stuff we can to the site. So i um, very excited about that. So Anthony asked, do you ever have plans to have team versus team stats in a season? Uh, we actually do have that already in here. Um, it's tucked away in the team game finder. And the team game finder is similar to the player game finder um, where it's searching through game logs, but instead of uh, four players, it's four teams. Um, and you can use this to, to dive into any sort of any sort of matchup that you can think of. So um, for example, let's see who's playing tonight. So uh, uh, let's see, Washington and Florida, they're starting off in uh, maybe eight minutes. Um, thank you for being on this webinar instead. Um, so if I wanna see all the stats of the Capitals and the Panthers going head to head this year, um, what I'm gonna do is again, starting with the search criteria, I'll scroll down to team filter, pick out one of the teams. In this case, I'll just start with uh, Washington and then I'll come down to game filter, select opponent. In this case, that'll be Florida. And then uh, uh, what I would do is come up to here and uh, select the search type, find teams with cumulative games in a season matching search criteria. And then I do uh, this year, 2021, 22, and I would run the search. And this gives us the regular season stats uh, from the series. So uh, we can see it's from the Capitals perspective because I put them as team and Panthers as opponent. You can switch it either way. Uh, you'll get the same stats. So we can see win loss and overtime losses. Uh, we can see the points and the sort of one loss percentage, but then we can also see stuff like goals and shots and shorthanded goals. And then under opponent, these are the Panthers stats against the Capitals. Um, we've even got like power play opportunities and shots against and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, if you would rather dig into the outcomes of every individual game, you could just switch it from find teams with the uh, to find teams with single games matching criteria, run that search, and you'll get each single game as its own line with a link to the box score. And you could run, I could have a second page open with the Florida Panthers side, and I could be looking at that if I would rather do it that way than this opponent, you know, team thing. Um, but what if you want to see the playoffs? go back to game type, switch it from regular season to playoffs, 
Or since we're going into uh, the middle of a series, if you want to see every matchup, regular season and playoffs, you can click either. And then when I run this search, it's going to give the combined stats from both th these three regular season matchups and all of their playoff games so far. Um, so there we go. Now we can see uh, the combined sort of stat total from the regular season and the playoffs. I, I could have also just done the, uh, the playoffs if I would rather do that, but that either option is a very cool one in case you're looking for these sorts of like combined regular season and playoff stats. So that's how you get kind of team head-to-head -head type stats. Uh, so that is the team game finder. Uh, I'm going to move on now because uh, I got a lot of questions about advanced stats. Um, and, uh, you know, there were people who were just looking for an explanation of like, where do I find advanced stats? What do I do with them? So we have two advanced stats tools in Hockey Stat Head. Uh, they're labeled the Player Advanced Stats Finder and the Team Advanced Stats Finder. So I'll start with the team. Both of our both of them go back to 2007, 2008. That's the first year we have kind of the shot data to create stats like Corsi and Fenwick, uh, which are which are kind of the main sort of mainstays of this uh, advanced stats finder. Um, so in the team advanced stats finder, you have the option to look up single season stats or combined seasons over a range of years. So I'm going to stick with single seasons since we only really care about this year. And then you'll see that we have filter options, both kind of the statistical filters for the, the actual stats in it, but we can also filter by situation. So we can get even strength, which is you know typically what you're looking at uh, uh, for, for kind of a baseline, but you can also dig into power play uh, and shorthanded stats. Uh, you can also get five on five when it's close, five on five when it's tied anything like that. Uh, so you can really narrow down your research. And one of the questions I got was like, how do I use StatHead to handicap uh, sports bets? Uh, presumably, you know, you, you, that person lives in a state where gambling is legal. They enjoy placing a wager every now and then. I, I do as well. Um, and they want to uh, know how to use it. So this is a really good way to dig into, uh, dig into that matchup, especially early on if you're trying to bet like a series total you know uh you can look at these stats and see them so let me pull up the uh 20 21 22 um even strength advanced stats we can kind of dig into some of these and see uh see what they look like so um uh by default it's going to sort by course e4 which is not you know super useful on its own um but you can change that to any of these advanced stats and then once we have the table up, it'll just be all the teams. So we can resort it kind of however we want. Um, so we'll just give it a minute to put the search together. There we go. So you can see right now, it's just who had the most Corsi 4 events, but I can switch it here to Corsi 4% at even strength. Um, I'm not sure how many people on the call know uh, about Corsi and Fenwick. Um, so I apologize if, um, this is maybe maybe basic information, but if you have any questions about what any of the stats are, you can just hover your mouse over them and they'll give you the explanation of what they mean. So you can see here hovering over Corsi 4 and it's just explaining that all Corsi 4 is is shots and blocks and misses. So it's basically any shot attempt by your team. And then Corsi against is that same thing against you. So by the other team against the team in question. So these are all of the uh, Corsi events, all the shots, blocks, and misses that the Panthers made uh, with the puck. And then these are all those events that were against the Panthers directed at their goal. And then Corsi 4 percentage is just the rate of uh, uh, Corsi 4 events versus the over total, the total overall rate of, of Corsi events in the season. And the, the, the concept here is that if a team is over 50% in Corsi 4 percentage, they're generating more shots than their opponents. So they're controlling the puck more. And in general, we would like to see teams doing that. We want to do that. And that makes sense because the Florida Panthers here are on top uh, uh, of Corsi 4 percentage this year. And if you go back, you can see that like usually the teams that have good Corsi 4 rates do well in the playoffs. Um, 
uh, you, it doesn't necessarily mean you're guaranteed to win. Obviously, uh, there's there's no stat that can do that. But you can look at it and kind of quickly eyeball like this team's going to control the puck. And alternately, you can look at how a team uh, that controlled the puck, you know, what did they do with it? Were they scoring a lot? Uh, does a team maybe not need the puck as much to score? Did they have a low Corsi 4 percentage, but they generated a lot of goals? So you can do that kind of like traditional stat, advanced stat analysis when you're handicapping, hey, maybe I think this team is well positioned to upset a huge favorite or maybe not. A lot of the time, uh, you know, it's probably going to come down to, you know, the individual play of the players. But when you're when you're kind of taking this big, big, big picture look, that's a, a good place to start. And then we also have Fenwick. We have uh, PDO um, and zone starts and even face-off wins. I got a question about face-offs. You can see face-off win and loss percentage here in the advanced stat finder. So that is the team advanced stat finder. Uh, but we also have one for players. So if you're trying to handicap, you know, if you're trying to bet on who might score a goal that night or trying to decide who to start in your fantasy league, um, I guess daily fantasy at this point since we're in the playoffs. This is another great place to look. Um, so we'll see once again, we have uh, options for single seasons, combined seasons, and players with the most seasons matching criteria. These are all the same advanced stats more or less that uh, we had on the other finder. Uh, but now what they just mean is what was that team's Corsi 4 percentage when that player was on the ice? Uh, so instead of the team's total number, it's just the, uh, 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 the team's number when that player is on, um, one really cool thing about this is that in addition to that, that basic number, what the team's, uh, Corsi four rate is when he's on the ice, we also have the relative Corsi four, which is the change when he's on the ice versus when they're off the ice. So if it's positive, that means that the team's Corsi goes up when that player is on the ice, they're generating more shots than their opponent at a higher rate than normal when he's on the ice. Connor McDavid, no surprise to see him up there. Joe Pavelski, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of stars up here. If it's negative, then that means that the team is generating fewer shots. It doesn't necessarily mean that's, that that's a bad player. It could mean that they're a defensive player, that they're playing late in the game or something like that. But generally, especially given that these are people who get a lot of run, that's not what you want to see uh, uh, on there. So you set up these searches the same way. You can go into the statistical filters and decide on anything you want. You can go to the player filters and get age, year, rookie status. One thing I like to do is look at the rookies who are having high relative 4 c four rates just to see kind of like, you know, um, which, which rookies seem to be impacting their team's performance. Um, and uh, stuff like that. So that is the advanced stats finder. Um, if you have more questions about that, uh, cause I know that that was a lot and it can get kind of complicated, uh, feel free to uh, drop them in the chat or in the Q and A, or you can uh, email us after the fact, if you're thinking about this later and you're like, you know, it just doesn't make sense. But again, uh, uh, it's really great if you just hover over the stat, it'll explain it to you uh, uh, pretty easily. But we'll, we're also happy to happy to go into uh, an explanation if you would like. So one more tool I want to show you tonight, and that is the player goal finder. Um, so we've looked at the player game finder. We have, uh, which is uh, obviously the game level. It's looking at box scores and game logs. We have the season finder, which works at the season level. So the goal finder looks through our list of goals in our database. And we have a lot of goals. We have every single goal in here. And more than that, we have like information on the goals. So we can see the period, the time, uh, if it was even strength uh, or power play or shorthanded. We can see how old the player was at the time they scored the goal. We can see where the goal was scored. And then we can see stuff like who assisted and allowed the goal. Um, so that's a lot of really interesting data. And the question is, what do you want to do with it? So here in the goal finder, we can do all kinds of really crazy advanced searches. So I'm going to switch it to playoffs again. Regular season is in the past. We're only going to look at the playoffs. So if the first thing I wanted to do was see um, 
who scored uh, was just see, uh, how about we'll start with this year and we'll look at a list of every single go ahead goal in the playoffs. So I already set playoffs. I set the year. So then I'm going to want to go down to these filters and you'll see, you'll probably recognize game filter, very similar to the last tool player filter. It's the same way. Uh, uh, similar, although there are some new ones in here, like goal number, which is very cool. You can load up career goal number 100 or career goal number one. Uh, but I'm going to go down to game state filter because this is, to me, the coolest part. Um, and you can see stuff like uh, was the goal unassisted? You can empty netter, the period and the time. Uh, but one thing I'm going to look up just to start with is score situation. I'm going to go to put team ahead. So who had the most go-ahead goals? Uh, so first I'm going to start with a list of go-ahead goals in this year's playoffs. And uh, they're going to be sorted uh, alphabetically because I didn't change the sort. But you can see here, this is just the list of all of the goals that put their team ahead at some point in the game. Not necessarily the game winner, just something that put the team ahead at some point during the game. So I have this list. Pretty interesting. I can maybe, you know, take a look at it. But uh, what if I want to see who, who who's done that the most times? Uh, instead of this, uh, going back, I'd go back up to the search type, that top bar. And instead of this single goals, I'm going to do find total goals, matching criteria in a season, because we're only looking at 21-22 right now, or the 2022 playoffs. Uh, since I've already narrowed the, the year range, it doesn't really matter which, which one of those I select. But if I had a full range, it would obviously matter. So now, this is who has had the most go-ahead goals in the playoffs so far this year. And uh, we're still early. There's still not a ton uh, of separation there. But if I go back to last year, and include that data set in the search. Now we see uh, Braden Point did it eight times and there's a lot of other ones. So the real combination, so the real power comes from like combining this stuff. So you can combine uh, that with, you can do go ahead goals in the third period. And we'll run that search. We'll, we'll probably, we'll all expand it out to Career totals, I've expanded the range to all years now. So this is who had the most third period go-ahead goals in their playoff career. Um, we can see, um, we can add another filter. Uh, I uh, I could do time. So I could even narrow this, this range down to the last two minutes. So who had the most go-ahead goals? In the last two minutes, uh, we can see obviously this is starting to narrow narrow it down a little bit. There's there's fewer examples, so now I could get a list of all of the um, uh, go ahead goals in the last minute of the third period. Pretty cool stuff. And then we could even narrow it down further. Like, did the team win the series? What round? You know, we could do again any single playoff series for some of those combined searches um, and stuff like that. But then I just wanted to point out these boxes, score, assisted by, and versus goalie. You can put player names into that and see every goal that was scored against Martin Brodeur or every goal that was assisted by Wayne Gretzky. And again, build out these leaderboards, who scored the most on Brodeur, who scored the most that were assisted by Gretzky and so on. Um, as, as you can see, like, there are so many filters and situations and, you know, options that the, the possibilities here are really endless. You know, I could, I could narrow this down uh, even to game seven, you know, and we can see what we get, uh, get on here, just, just one. That's pretty cool. Um, so this is the one where like when you're watching a game and something crazy happens, this is the, this is the, the first two tool to go to. This is the, the first one I go to to just be like, Dang, I bet that when was the last time that happened? That was insane. Um, the the goal finder, very powerful tool for finding that sort of thing. Um, so let's see. I have a couple other questions here, um, but I just want to see if there are any in the chat or the Q and A uh, that people wanted us to uh, to go over. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them. Drop them in the chat um or uh the q a option um and we can go through those but in the meantime let me answer a couple more that we got in the rsvp so i got a question about how to figure out 
how do I figure out home in a way, uh, like how much does, does home ice advantage actually affect things in a, in a playoff game? Um, so there's a couple ways to determine that. Um, if you actually go over to the hockey reference website, we have a cool tool in our playoff section um, that's totally free. It doesn't require a skyhead subscription, but we have this playoff series historical data. And this shows you the outcome of uh, every single uh, uh, game situation, uh, like in a series. So like, did they win game one? How, how many times did they go on to win the series? And four, you know, when it's two, two, what percentage of the time does the winner of game five win the series? You can even see it split by home in a way. So you can see a, how often did the team in a uh, uh, game two where the series is tied one, one, how often did the home team win, win that? How often did the away team win that? And then how, how frequently did they go on to win the series? So uh, this is a pretty cool feature that again, is totally free and it's just there for you to reference on the hockey reference site from the stat head side. You probably want to get more specific than that. So I would go into the team game finder and use uh, the game location filter to filter by road and home. And you can either do combined uh, uh, searches uh, for, for over multiple years for multiple teams. You could dig into one team if you're curious how a particular team does at home versus away or like an opponent's home ice advantage. All of that sort of thing uh, is, is what you could do in the game finder. So you've got that, that kind of fun, you know, uh, interesting like sort of data set on the, on the main page. And then for more nitty gritty in-depth research, you can do it right here, including like, you know, every team's road record this year or every team's home record this year and stuff like that. So that is how you do it in there. Um, so let's see. So the uh, James wants to know, can I see the scores of all playoff games for the Minnesota Wild? And uh, the answer to that is yes, it's uh, very easy to uh, do that um in the in the team game finder in the tool i'm in right now in fact so what i would do I'll, I'll turn off the game location filter and i'll select team and i'll select minnesota wild and then i'll just click this this option find teams with single games matching criteria make sure i switch that over to playoffs and then if i run the search i'm going to get every single playoff game by the wild and uh the score of every single game so uh, that's a really great question. And uh, it also brings up a really good thing, which is like, if you have this list of Minnesota Wild playoff games and you want to do more research with it, uh, something maybe, you know, uh, uh, that you can't necessarily do in StatHead, maybe you want to pick certain games and, and add them up or, you know, compare it to something else or whatever sort of research you want to do on your own beyond what you can do in StatHead. Uh, the, uh, what you can do is export our data off the site and put it on your computer and work on it on your own. So the way you do that is every stat head table has this little um, menu over it that says export data. And when you hover your mouse over it, you'll get this drop down uh, menu of options. So the first one is modify, export, and share table. This will let you uh, basically eliminate rows and columns from the table that you don't want. So you can click these X's, you can click this other X and it'll eliminate everything past that one. Um, and then once you kind of have your table set up, the modify export and share options are here on this yellow thing below that. So if you want HTML code to put it on a website or something like that, you can get that. If you want to post it on Reddit or a message board, we have it already coded and formatted for that format. So all you do is copy and paste and you're good to go. Um, we even have like more complicated stuff like, you know, wiki formats and JavaScript widgets and all kinds of stuff like that. So that's that option. But then right below that, you'll see get as Excel workshop. And when I click that, it's just gonna download an Excel file onto my computer with this table. Um, and uh, stuff like that. So I can just click it, download it, and uh, then I'll have it in Excel to, to do, you know, whatever sort of research I want to do with it. And then lastly, if I'd rather have it as a uh, format as a CSV to copy and paste into something else, I can click get table as CSV and it'll turn it into a CSV formatted thing. So I would just select all copy and paste. So that is how you share things 
Um, as far as the question about fighting, I wish uh, we had more fighting data. We don't have uh, that right now, uh, but we're always looking for new data sets and new research that we can add to the site. That's certainly something that we would definitely want to take a look at. So uh, not right now, but hopefully, hopefully down the line. Um, yeah, and it looks like that's all the questions, except for people asking me to predict games. Unfortunately, uh, I am terrible at predicting games. Uh, I get them wrong all the time. Uh, between the wild and the blues, I uh, uh, go uh, blues. I'll go blues. Why not? Uh, we're going to, I'm going to Kansas City next week. I don't know if that's a faux pas to pick the same Missouri team if, uh, or if that's like a good thing. But either way, that's what, that's what I'm doing. Um, let's see. Uh, I got to go wild. Yeah, I should have said wild. I, I don't know. I, I, I think it could go either way, to be honest. Um, so uh, that is going to do it for our stat head playoff hockey presentation. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your questions, both whether you submitted them in advance or uh, did them here live on the chat. If you have more questions, if there's more stuff you want to know about how stat head works, I know it's complicated. Um, please reach out to us. We love to help. Um, and show you kind of how to do stuff in Stathead. So uh, you can email us. We're support at stathead.com. Um, you can also uh, get connected with us on social media. We're on Twitter at Stathead. We're on Facebook as well. Um, and uh, Hockey Reference is also on Instagram and TikTok. So whatever platform you're on, Hockey Reference is on Twitter and Facebook as well. Whether you want to follow Hockey Reference or Stathead, whatever platform you're on, we're there. Feel free to, you know, shoot us an at or a DM or a comment or uh, anything like that. Shoot us an email, support at sadhead.com, and we'll be happy to help guide you in the right direction. So once again, that will do it for this presentation, uh, but we will email this out to you as well. So you'll get the full video. If there's anything you want to go back and review, anything that I uh, went over too quickly or that you missed and that you want to want to review again. So thanks again for tuning in tonight and uh, uh, have a good uh, rest of your evening. Enjoy all the playoff action. And uh, we will see you next time we do one of these webinars. So thanks.